Thank you for joining us today. I had an idea for a fun little pore painting experiment. This is another option you can use with dried acrylic skins, where you can take this dried paint, apply it onto these little fake acrylic nails here, and dazzle everybody with your brand new beautiful abstract nail art. So first, we're going to need to create this paint, so let's do that right now. Okay, so first things first, we got the colors I'm working with here. We got a silver, metallic silver specifically. We have Festive Green from Americana brand. We have, where is it? Just regular old purple from Craftsmart and regular old black also from Craftsmart. I'm just stirring in a couple drops of silicone into all of these. Then we're going to get started. I'm just going to pour this right onto the freezer paper that I have on the table. Um, and we just need a nice big flat acrylic skin so that once this all dries we can cut the dried acrylic skin and use it to cover the surface of our acrylic appliques. Okay? Now, if you are unfamiliar with my videos, I have a playlist that has all of what I would consider essential techniques for acrylic pouring this fluid acrylic art style so if you haven't seen it yet and you don't know what I'm doing check that out I have links in the description and I have links and information in the descriptions of all my videos that tell you the nitty-gritty of what I'm doing in case you don't really feel like watching the whole thing I understand these can get kinda long sometimes so I'm gonna combine these and then we're gonna pour it I think that's some pretty little work we got there. Uh, the original came out a lot more green. I think purple is probably a heavier color in terms of pigment density. So most of the pigment, purple pigment from the original pour is at the bottom. There's a couple tiny little spots where it looked like the silicone floated bits of purple to the top. But overall it looks like my nails are going to be a very green and silver look which personally suits my taste just fine. I actually added a little extra here just so I could make a few extra little pendants and stuff from the skins that I'll get from the side or I could even do a row of nails using this nice border, this nice coast from uh, the Purple Sea. Anyways, we're gonna give this a snap of our fingers and it'll be dry for us to work with. Alright, we are back. We have some nice dried acrylic paints here. The purple didn't stand out too much and I've tried to use a top coat of clear nail polish over off on this area here to see if that would make any of the colors more vibrant. It didn't really make any noticeable difference so pretty much whatever you get when you're done painting what you see is what you get. I'm going to start getting a full set together and we're going to test to see how these look, if it's easy to create these. Um, we're going to see if you can sand, if you can kind of file down the nails once you have the paint or if it's a better idea to shape the nails first and then sand them or and then apply the paint uh, as well as if you can trim them all that kind of stuff just general wear and tear test to see how viable this option is so first I would recommend getting a little section of paint the section of design that you enjoy personally I'm a little, well is this even a fingernail? Is this the index finger? It's kind of big. Did I grab a thumb? Hold on, stand by. Okay, looks like I just grabbed the big uh, index fingernail. So, personally I'm a little torn between this nice little selection where it's got black, green, and purple all together, or if I want to cut in here and find some other options. Personally, I think that the green black colors here would make better use as pendants for my acrylic skin projects. I think I can repurpose those a little better. So I'm going to save that area and I am going to go with this little coastline of purple and green. So first I'm going to lay this out, just kind of get a general feel for where my colors are sitting at. Maybe I'll do a, a faux French manicure here where just the tip of these nails is coming out kind of silvery. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to these up just to get an idea for where I should be cutting and trimming on these. And I'm going to even spread this out just a little bit more, increase the margins across all these nails because 
this will be the first try cutting out the shapes for these and since I don't have as much experience with it yet I want to give myself a little more room for error so now I've got my X-Acto knife uh, I'm gonna make just kinda general markings cut out a large rectangular area these all have about a half inch or about a centimeter or two nah just a centimeter these have got a little margin of space around them so that when I've cut these all out then we can just retrieve that there I cut with enough pressure to remove the actual freezer paper underneath as well so now let's clean this up and look at what we're working with a little more closely okay here's my train of thought on this when you're working with the nails the goal is going to be to apply the paint first because we can guarantee smooth coverage and no air bubbles if we put it on the nail before we put the nail on our finger and then as long as we keep it off the finger we can also use exacto knives or scissors to trim the paint right where it meets the edges of our nail so if I want to put this paint on first I'm gonna break this down into little subsections I'm taking the existing paint we have and carefully I am kind of portioning it, rationing out the paint, cutting it into little strips here, little rectangular strips and once I'm done with this we can then have these separated strips of paint, these dried acrylic skins. Once we peel it off, what we'll be able to do is lay it over the top of the nail. We can kind of adjust it and all that in preparation for the glue. Right? You can kind of see how it wraps around and all that. We already see that it was a good idea to add an extra margin around here because being uh, curved like this I didn't even think to account for the extra surface area due to the curvature of the nail. If you're looking at this, if we just look at this nail is you know this wide you think oh I only need that much paint but we have to remember that the paint has to come all the way up and back down again so it takes up more area than it originally looked like. There's maybe not quite enough for this thumbnail. I'm going to go ahead and see if the other nails have enough. If not, we're going to redo this with a different selection of paint. So let's see that right now. Well, I have good news. The margins that we left originally were just enough to cover the side to side of all of our nails. Now that I know they fit, I'm going to get the acrylic plastic to set to the acrylic nail. Uh, any kind of super glue would work for this. I would recommend a super glue because most of them set or they dry pretty quickly. I have some Loctite 406. It's a industrial strength super glue created specifically for use with plastics and acrylic is a type of plastic and I know this sets quickly so I'm gonna try and get this done as fast as possible before the glue dries. I'll tap there, spread this out. I'm using uniform pressure and kind of rolling my finger side to side across the nail to make sure that the glue is pushed out across all of it. And that is on there pretty good already. Yeah, that is not going anywhere. Okay, well that's good. We got our first fingernail set. And we're just going to repeat that process for uh, all of our nails until they're all glued. What we're going to do now is carefully take our X-Acto knife and trim away at the edges here. You know what? That's a little dangerous for everybody. Let's see if we can't get this done just with a pair of scissors. Everyone's got scissors at home, right? Okay, all of our nails are trimmed and cut to shape, but 
you can probably see there's a couple little wrinkles and maybe a few little air bubbles, little lumps. And this is all just because the acrylic paint for this pour painting medium doesn't always settle perfectly evenly. So I'm going to see if I can go over this with the heat gun, all right? And let's see if we can get the nails to smooth out. Poor little guy never stood a chance. The uh, issue with using a heat gun or a hair dryer looks like, well, the nails are also acrylic, so of course any heat strong enough to flatten or smooth out the paint itself would probably be enough already to melt the nail, which is exactly what happened to poor little index finger here. So I'm going to go whip up another one so we can take a look at the next step, which is accepting <laughs> accepting any bubbles or little uh, wrinkles in the paint and applying them onto your fingernails. So I'm just gonna go for it. We're gonna start applying these nails. I'm gonna shoot an intro so you can see what these look like before you even start watching the video. And then we're gonna see if they can be sanded and or clipped without damaging the design after the nails have set. All right, let's give this a shot. Well, look at that. I think I'm just the prettiest girl at the Harvest Moon Ball. Uh, well, so far, this has been a pretty good success. I'm not a professional lacquerista or anything like that. I can't do nails for a living, not after a single try, but at all stages, except the heat treatment, this has been a success. So, let's see if we can sand and file these babies. Okay, so now that the nails are on, all the glue is dry, the little uh, clear polish, clear coat on top is done, everything's done. We're just going to see how these hold up to trimming and filing. So I'm going to mess these up a bit and we're going to report back, see what happens. Okay, well, with general filing, filing the correct way, taking a single stroke, bringing it down, not grinding back and forth, being careful with it, uh, normal clipping, all that seems to work just perfectly on the first two nails. I did file them as you would any other fingernail. Uh, seeing that these nails can be filed and trimmed and shaped after application, I wanted to go and get a little messy with the other fingers to see if we could goof these up a bit. So I just drag my filing block all over the surface and if you can't see it did eat away at the paint and unlike traditional nail polish, we're talking acrylic nail polish that dries by itself, not the gel polish that needs UV treatment, but whereas traditional nail polish would chip and flake uh, since this is a kind of soft acrylic plastic, it doesn't get brittle, meaning it'll, it'll kind of rub away like the bottom of eraser or some other gummy plastic. So it's definitely not an appealing look, but I'm sure everybody feels the same way about chipping when you uh, have a coat that you really like. So it takes about the same amount of abuse as any other nail polish would. And on this finger, I started filing upwards to see, and damage wasn't too bad, but yeah, you still get that stretchy kind of acrylic burnout. So just file these like you would any other regular fingernail, and you'll be able to wear these with pride for a while. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. We got all sorts of things in the pipeline. We got some custom toys coming through. We have videos on music theory in the works and a set of instructions on how to make a sculpture start to finish so you can try it yourself at home. Thanks again for watching. This has been Souffle Art. Have a great day.